the baby. Tell me what you were thinking when your foot was making contact with her belly. I want to take you like this and throw you through that wall. I can't change it. What parent would it be feeling the outrage that I feel right now? That was my grandbaby. You knew you were carrying a baby, and then you stay with the man that took your baby's life. Why? If you ever lay a hand on my daughter, and I will stomp you. She has no right to put her hands on me. Who the f are you to do what you do? Welcome to the show. My first guest is Sean. Sean, why are you here? Um, I need help to stop abusing my wife physically and I'm on, like verbally. So are you here and you're telling me that you physically abuse your wife? Yes. Okay, if you do hit your wife, then you have to stand up. Uh. <laughs> you, you, you came for that reason but I'm told your story changed last night when my producers saw your ID. What happened? Um, well, when I was born, I was born with both male and female. And, um, female organs? Yeah. Um, and, well, my parents pretty much got a choice, you know, either daughter or son. And <clears throat> when they got the choice, my parents said, you know, I want a daughter. So, the doctor ran some tests and came back and said, well, um, your child has more uh, male hormones than female. And um, internally, your child is all male. And so um, they decided to just continue with it and do it. So I was raised as female, you know, wearing dresses and long hair and all that. And when I was 14, I changed it. like because I was going through so much changes, you know, my voice got deeper and I didn't want to hang out with the girls. I wanted to hang out with the guys, I wanted to try for football. And so they started noticing the changes also. So we sat down and talked. They told me the entire story about everything. Oh, so at this point you weren't even sure? No, I, hadn't, I, didn't, I had no clue about anything. And so- And this occurred when you were 14? Yes. And you are now how old? 19. 19. Yeah. And we sat down and we talked about it. They told me the full story. And the next day, you know, we talked about it again. I told them that I wasn't going to continue living this, that I didn't feel like myself. You weren't going to continue living your life as, as a woman? Yeah, as a woman, that I didn't feel like myself. And um, they said, uh, well, either you keep living the way we told you to or you get out of my house. So I moved out. Well, I moved in with another family member, and they took me in. They understood everything. They knew the whole story. Did it hurt you <laughs> that your parents weren't supportive? that they, either you live this way or you get, you're 15 years old, get yeah. out of the house, you're still a child. Yeah. You, family member takes you in, now you're 19 years old, tell me what's happening. Well, I just finished school, went to college, um, and I met Andrea, my wife, on MySpace. And about four months later, she had no clue about anything. She just thought I was your regular guy. Um, when we started, when we moved in together after like four months, uh, she saw my ID. And so I had to kind of explain it to her and, you know, kind of ease it in on her. But she still didn't know the full truth. I think everybody's wondering the same thing. Were you intimate with Andrea at some point? Yeah. Well, at that point, when did she figure out something was amiss here? No. And didn't she say, y you don't have, uh, you know, a male part? No, I'd never let her see anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you angry at your parents that they made the decision to have the surgeries to make you a girl? Yeah, very. Have you ever got counseling for that? No. So, yeah. you say this is your wife, right? Yeah. But you're not legally married, you're living. It's common law, I mean, we fill out everything But you do, together. you live together. Yeah. Have you ever been completely honest with her about your situation? Yeah, I mean, it, she knows to this point, like she knows everything now. Now she knows everything. Yeah, she knows everything and now. And does she, she accepts you? Yeah, she says that she loves me. For well then, why would you beat her then? It's a lot of things put together. It's, she smokes, she's immature, uh, she's very controlling. <laughs> she smokes? Yeah. You're telling me you beat the woman that you love 
the woman that you opened up and told this thing that most people would never understand and she tells you she loves you she's gonna stay by your side and this is the woman that you're gonna put your hands on explain to me why the one person in your life that you can open up to and tell the truth that you would beat her and it's not because of smoking I, I mean like I said it's just a lot of things combined it's well what are a lot of things it's she's immature she doesn't know how to like how old is she 19 18 sorry she's 18 yeah 18 most 18 year olds are immature that's what you get when you get into an adult relationship when you're 19 when you're 18 you're gonna have an immature relationship did she finish school no how long you been in this relationship for um, it'll be two years in January okay so she was 16 when you started dating her and you were 17 yeah. well I think that if you're beating her and you say she's your wife I think you shouldn't be in that relationship, right? What do you do to her? You, do you punch her? You punch her with your fist. Yeah. Where do you punch her? Arm, leg, face, anywhere. That's love? No. How many times do you do this to her? A lot. A couple times a week? Yeah. What, is it, what do you feel when you're doing this to her? Just getting the rage out, I guess. Just getting the rage out. What, what do you need to stop beating the woman you love? I, I think I need, like, counseling or something. <laughs> Has she had to go to the hospital as a result of you hitting her? Yeah. So it must have been, some of the injuries must have been pretty bad then, huh? Yeah. How many times has she been to the hospital? It's too many to count. It too, was, yeah, too. more than about ten. What are you holding? All the wristbands from all the times that I've been in the hospital because of him. He kicked me in the stomach and made me lose the baby. Tell me what you were thinking when your foot was making contact with her belly. I want to take you like this and throw you through that wall. I want to know why you beat the one woman that stands in your corner. She accepts you, she loves you, and then you beat the crap out of her. But you're not just hitting her, you're putting her in the hospital. She keeps doing the same things. As she what does. is she doing? She just, she's controlling, she, I mean. Then break up with her. But I love her. You say she's controlling, how does she control you? Like, I'm not allowed to talk to any girls whatsoever. Um, well, that's a lot of wives. And what else? The smoke, you said smoking? You picked a smoker, it's, right? I, I didn't know it in the beginning. She just came out with it. You didn't know about her smoking. She didn't know that you were born a female, too, in the beginning, right? But she accepted that. What other things that she does to make you beat her? Uh, I, I mean, I can't even have a job where women work or else she's constantly calling me and go showing up and sitting there waiting until I get out of work. Well, at that point, don't you say, you know what, you need to grow up. I'm going to go on my way. I need to go out and provide for myself, and I can't do it with a child not letting me take a job. How does it, how does it help the problem by hitting her? It, does that it work things out? No, it doesn't. It just it helps me just calm down. It helps you to calm down by putting her into the hospital. Why? Because she's not there to, so she can talk to you? No, she's in the hospital recovering. And I'm told you're a jealous person too, right? Yeah. And why are you jealous? Just, I mean, other, when she talks to other guys, it's, it's different. Because when I talk to other girls, she has what other girls have. You know, I don't have what other guys have. I don't give a damn, you know, I, I'm sorry for the way you were born and the decisions that were made for you, but I will never feel sorry for you that you're hitting the woman that you love. And your girlfriend's name is Andrea. Yes. I'm going to ask you to leave the stage, Sean. I'm going to talk to her. I'll bring you out at some point. All right. This is uh, Sean's girlfriend, Andrea. Let's bring Andrea out. How you doing? Good. What are you holding? 
um, all the wristbands from all the times that I've been in the hospital because of him. Do you mind? This is, this is, is this all of them? Um, I don't know if that's all of them because I had some in the car and we cleaned up So the this car is every stuff. time you're saying that Sean has beat you, you ended up in the hospital, and this is every time you were in the hospital? Yeah. You dropped it. Okay. You see this one right here? It's this red one? That's one too many. That's one too many than this. All these. Now, you're 18 years old, right? Yes. I don't know your family situation, but right now, I'm going to talk to you as a father. I look at you, and I, I could see my daughter in your eyes. I hope I do a good enough job as a father that I would teach my daughter that when she becomes your age, she'll know that whenever a man ever puts his hand on her, she better leave that man and come home and tell daddy or call the police. You tell me, what's going on with Sean? Well, um, I mean, he's put me in the hospital quite a few times, and, like, we even had one instance to where I, I mean, he made me fall off of the back of the car, and I had to go to the hospital because I was bleeding really bad. And what, why, what were you doing on the back of the car? Well, we had gotten into an argument. We were in the apartment, and I didn't want him to leave because I didn't want him to drive stupid while he in was mad. In an emotional state. Yes. So I sat on the back of the car thinking, okay, he's not going to take off with me on the back of the car. Well, um, he did. <laughs> and when he took off, he drove. And when he turned, I fell off the back of the car. Do you see how crazy, crazy that is, though? Who and does that when the person they love is on the car? You're not a hood ornament. He never even came back, either. He kept on going. So I was laying in the middle of the ground, and he just kept going. He didn't turn around or anything to see if I was OK. He said he looked in the rearview mirror to see if I was OK. And I looked okay as I was laying on the ground, apparently. And, th and this, is, this is your body? What is this that I'm looking at? Um, that was actually a scar that's still on my knee right here. And how did he give you that? Um, when I fell off the car. Oh, when you fell off the car. I also chipped my tooth when is, I fell off the from? car. And that's from? Yeah, that was on my hip. And you chipped your tooth and you got a gash in your hand? Yes. But you looked okay in the rearview mirror. I want to take you like this and throw you through that wall. What parent would it be feeling the outrage that I feel right now? That was my grandbaby. My name is Byron Brown. I'm the anti-lawyer lawyer. It makes my blood boil when people like this threaten you, take your money. I fight for the little guy. He sent me a screenshot of my address that I sent him to receive the wigs and told me that he'll come to my house if I didn't leave him alone. I'm just so confused by this. I'll judge your situation and I'll tell you straight out if you've got a case. I never said the word sex or suggested anything having to do with sex. Again, the police aren't doing anything wrong. Byron, I don't like the law in this situation. So get ready to soak in 265 pounds of pure justice. That was the, the comment that got me fired. Know that you're the punk. May not be the answer you want. Don't do that. No, she can't. Don't do that. No, no, no. But it will be the judgment you need. Wait, do not tell me that he doesn't have a case. He though. doesn't have a case. Are you serious? Yeah, honestly. Because it's time to get judged by me, Big B. Finally, when he got how many, back, uh, he how many me. times does he beat you? In like a week. That's just so. It's so sad. Yes, in a week. How many? How many times does he beat you? Um, it depends. Some days uh, we can go like two days and he'll be okay, and then it's like he just gets mad about. And when the you say he beats you, things. exactly what is he doing to you? Well. He punches me, he pushes me into things, he doesn't care if I fall, I mean... Why do you stay with him? 
He's the first guy I ever loved, and he's really the only relationship I've ever really, like the real relationship I've ever had. Everybody has a first. I think very few people end up with the first person that they date or well, that they I've fall in love with. I've dated other people, but he's just the first one I've ever loved, so I don't know. I feel like I put a lot of work into our relationship, and I just, I really care about it. Is it him. a relationship worth saving? Well, the fact that he called the show and is wanting to change tells me yes. How about the fact that he's beaten you several times and put you in the hospital? I see on my card it says you had a miscarriage. Yes, um, we actually broke up for a little while. Um, like I've left him a million times, so one of the times that we stayed broken up for a little bit, I um, had drink and got with somebody else. And when I came back, I was pregnant. And oh, okay. then uh, he had kicked me in the stomach and made me lose the baby. Say that again, please. He kicked me in the stomach and made me lose the baby. He kicked you in the stomach and he made you lose your baby. Yeah. Think about that. He kicked you in the stomach, and he made you lose your baby. It wasn't that he was purposely trying to make me lose the baby, but it was just that we had gotten into an argument, and he got mad. Let me ask you something. If a man kicks a pregnant woman, what would be the intention? I don't know. Is there any other intention than to cause harm? to that woman and her child? Listen, I'm mad. I'm not mad at you. But I'm mad about that you allow this to keep happening to you. Have you ever been with this man since that incident? Yeah. Why? Would you give this guy comfort after he did that to you? You would go and be nice to this man and, and will he call the show? You know what? I, I, forget him, man. Forget him. I'm not going to save a relationship where a man took a baby away. How is there any future there? I mean, here, this right here is shocking enough. This right here, all this is a reason off alone for your own safety, for your own protection, would be to leave this man. Right here, all this. That's all the evidence in the world. But then, it drives me crazy, he kicks you in the stomach and you lose a baby. Why don't you run? Why don't you tell me, Steve, this show shouldn't be about how we're going to make this work and get him help. This show should be, Steve, get me away from this psycho. Listen, I don't like violence. I don't like it. But I'll tell you something right now. If you were my daughter, I would drag you away, and there wouldn't be enough policemen to stop me from kicking this guy's ass. You knew you were carrying a baby, and then you stay with the man that took your baby's life. Why? That you would put your hand on her for any reason, and then lay down next to her and say you love her. That's not love. Love that hurt. Get off my stage! What is it that you want to happen today? Well, I was hoping that we could get some help and, like, like, 
we could fix it to where he doesn't have all this anger inside of him anymore. He doesn't want to hit me. I mean, I know he knows what he's doing is wrong. Let's not say hitting it. you. Let's say stop putting me in the hospital. This isn't just violence at its lowest level. This is violence at a very high level. He's treating you like a squirrel that he runs you over and he's not even stopping. You're pregnant and he's kicking you in the stomach. Oh, Lord. You accept all the things about him. You say, it's okay. I love you. I want to be with you. But he doesn't accept the fact that you were pregnant, that you're, he says he beats you because you smoke, because you're controlling. He also smokes. He just doesn't think it's okay. It's I don't give a damn who smokes. I don't. This, he, he, he doesn't think it's okay that you smoke because you're a woman. Yes. And he smokes. Are we going back in time or something? I mean... Whoever raised you, did they not tell you you are equal to a man? That you are not a second-class citizen because you're a woman? My mom even raised me specifically telling me, because she was abused, that I don't have to I don't have to be raised. I don't have to be around that. I don't have to deal with that. I don't, should never have to deal with that. Why do you? Why do you? I don't know. Because I love him. Oh, man. You know what? You, you want to confront him, right? You want, or, or don't you? Or you just want to talk to him? Yeah. Okay. Do you think the reason why he treats you this way is because he really is a woman? I don't know. I, I think it might be because he feels kind of insecure. I don't care what he was born with, what he wasn't born with, what bad decisions. There is no excuse, no reason to put his hands on you. <laughs> Let's bring Sean back out. Don't even... For a second, young man, think that you will sit on this stage. You know, you came on the show, and you know, you called, and you say, you know, oh, I, I, I need help. I need help to stop beating my girlfriend. And you know what? Why? Why would I help for one second, Sean? Why would I help for one second? I want to take you like this and throw you through that wall. That's what I want to do. At what point did you think it was, first of all, like there's so many things to go through. And I'll just start out with the small one. You look in the rearview mirror after you drove away with her on the car. She falls off. She hurts herself. And you check in the rearview mirror to see, oh, you looked all right, so I drove away. Mm. But you kick her in the belly and her stomach when she carries child? I didn't know she was pregnant. You didn't know she was pregnant? What made you so mad that you kicked her in the stomach, Sean? Did he know? We weren't completely sure. But it was brought up that the possibility that you were carrying a baby. Yeah. So you knew there was a possibility that she was pregnant. I'm starting to get really mad at you. This is your MySpace page. Me and Sean showing her stomach, getting bigger ready. There's baby growing inside her. I think both of you knew that she was pregnant. That's part of the reason why we thought I was, because of my stomach. Uh, yeah! Yeah, I think that's part of the reason why! You know what? I know you're the victim too, but you gotta stand up too. Stand up.
ever lay a hand on my daughter and I will stomp you. She has no right to put her hands on me. Who the f are you to do what you do? My name is Byron Brown. I'm the anti-lawyer lawyer. It makes my blood boil when people like this threaten you, take your money. I fight for the little guy. Sent me a screenshot of my address that I sent him to receive the wigs and told me that he'll come to my house if I didn't leave him alone. I'm just so confused by this. I'll judge your situation and I'll tell you straight out if you've got a case. I never said the word sex or suggested anything having to do with sex. Again, the police aren't doing anything wrong. Byron, I don't like the law in this situation. So get ready to soak in 265 pounds of pure justice. That was the, the comment that got me fired. Know that you're the punk. May not be the answer you want. Don't do that. No, she can't. Don't do that. No, no, no. But it will be the judgment you need. Wait, do not tell me that he doesn't have a case. He though. doesn't have a case. Are you serious? Yeah, honestly. Because it's time to get judged by me, Big B. I, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm trying to be on your side here. But when you do this, and you know you have a baby grown inside you, don't defend this man. Don't say, well, we weren't sure. I think you were pretty sure. Getting big already. And then somebody posts, oh my gosh, how far along are you? You knew you were carrying a baby. And then you stay with the man that took your baby's life. How does it feel to do that to the to a woman when she's looking like that when she's carrying a baby, Sean, and you kick her in the stomach? Oh. What would stop me as her father from putting my foot? would be okay with this story? What parent wouldn't be feeling the outrage that I feel right now? Who, Who the f are you to do what you do? Let me ask you something. Is it because you did that because you can't give her a baby? Steve. Then if you really love her, why wouldn't you let her have that child? And I'm supposed to help you today, get you counseling, save this marriage, save this relationship. Are you kidding me? See, I, you know, when this show's over, I wipe my hands cleaning you. And I'll get you counseling. I'm not, you know, I'll get you whatever you need to help yourself to stop you from doing what you do to anybody. That I will try to do. But after that, I wash my hands you. I will never see you again. I don't want, I, I get to choose who's in my life, and I choose not to have you in my life. But what do you, what do you want to say to this woman after everything you put her through? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do you want to say to him? Then I love you, I accept you for who you are, but if you can't stop with the abuse, we can't keep on going on. So I, can't, I can't take that anymore. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't even have to be here today. So if he does help you, you better take all the help you can get because if you come out of there and you put your hands on me one time, Sean. <laughs> She's talking to you. Probably got enough hospital um, identification bracelets to spell out, I'm sorry. Isn't that sad? You could probably spell out the whole sentence, I'm sorry. And what does it mean? What exactly was going through your mind when you were kicking her in her stomach when she's pregnant with child? What was going through your mind? Exactly. Tell me what you were thinking when your foot was making contact with her belly. What were you thinking? My foot didn't exactly hit her stomach.
<laughs> that water bottle didn't exactly hit you in the head either, right? Oh. It missed, right? Yeah. But I knew what my intent was. Okay? Yeah. Are, are you somehow trying to prove that you're a man? That you're in control by yeah. beating her, doing all this? No. That you're trying to prove that you're the man? No. That you feel inadequate? Please tell me it has to do with that. It might, but I don't know for sure. It might. Did you ever think maybe I need to go get help, talk to somebody, so I stop doing this to this woman? Steve. Steve. Yeah. Your mom, Wanda, has no idea about the abuse that's been happening. And she's here. I'm going to bring your mom out and hear what she has to say. on your body and you said you fell and I even said did he put a hand on you no he wouldn't he didn't that was my grandbaby mm. Mom, you don't have the right to decide whether I have grandchildren one time would be bad enough but this repeatedly in defending him and I accepted you Knowing what I knew, you know what I've been through. I've shared it with you. And then you would do it to her that you call you love her. I'm telling you, that's not love. And for you, there's not enough love in the world to cover that. No. I'm sorry. That's never acceptable. I don't care what you did. I don't care if she's a chain smoker, and I don't care what she does. You don't have a right to put your hands on her. You know I don't want you in this. Look at you. You are beautiful. You quit school. You gave up your dreams to be abused. If you were going to go back to this man, you're going to do it. And I've seen it a thousand times. But you know what I've also seen? I've seen eventually where it ends bad, where the woman ends up dead. And somebody's going to be putting you in a body bag. You are the cop. Get off my stage. I don't understand. And Sean, I'm sorry. I am hurt because I accepted you with everything I knew. I defended you. But I'm going to tell you now, as God is my witness, you ever lay a hand on my daughter and I will stomp you to your mother and I will you. Shake your head. Shake your head. Old school or not, I know you think, you know, oh, a woman know, can't do it. It's interesting right now. You're smirking. You smirk when she says that. You smirk when she came out. What the hell are you smirking about? She says she's gonna put her hands on me. She has no right to put her hands on me. Really? Oh. Really? Then why do you have a right to put yours on her? You help me understand what gives you the right to put your hands on her. I know you like this thing, when I touch her, you'll say, oh, when, cause me and her play softball together and I'll pop her on the bottom after a good play and your question, or you'll say, oh, get your hand off my butt. Let me tell you something, I brought this butt in this world. This is my butt, buddy. <laughs> and you won't hurt her again. But I'm telling you now, it stops here. It stops here, one way or the other. I don't even want you going back there. I want you coming home with me. Oh. Let me tell you something. Well, hold on. That's, that's love. That's love. He just looked in the rearview mirror again. He just looked in the rearview mirror again, and he left you. Hear my heart in this. If he loved you, he'd never put a hand on you. Looking in the rearview mirror again, leaving her. You said she does, the mom doesn't have a right to put her hands on you. And you say this after the woman you love comes out carrying all these hospital discharge bracelets, huh? How many times you put that woman in the hospital and you dare fix your lips to say she'd have no right to put her hands on me? You know what? You do got problems. 
and I'm gonna make sure you see somebody so you don't do this to anybody again. But you ever put your hands on her again, I will personally get on an airplane, come to your hometown, and take the police, and come to you, and lock your ass up. You won't be getting help from somebody who's gonna talk to you nice on a couch. You'll be sitting in jail. That's my promise to you. You ever put your hands on her again, I'm coming to lock you up myself. You know what? You're gonna go out there and you're gonna apologize to that mother of what you did. She accepted you, she accepted this relationship, so you're gonna go out there and apologize to that mother for what you did to her daughter. She's gonna make her leave me, what's the point? Whether she makes you leave her or not, and if I was her mother, I'd make her leave you too. But you owe that woman, and you owe your, your so-called wife, the woman that you say is your wife, I want you to go out and apologize to both of those women right now. Man. Be You say you're a man, be a man and go out there and apologize. I'm sorry. Nothing else I can say. I think you better put a little more into it. I did. Do it again. For me. I'm sorry for putting my hands on your daughter. And I'm sorry for what I put you through. You got to find out the truth about what was happening to your daughter. You finally got to find out the truth of what happened to your little girl. So you know what you do now? You protect her. You know the truth now. We're backstage, and you're still worried about her mom making her break up with you. Yeah, they're not going to stop. They're just going to keep talking. And we don't have first a of all, First of all, don't speak that way on my stage. Second of all, this woman has the right to do whatever she wants, from accepting your apology to putting your ass in jail. We're gonna keep talking our crap? It's not crap, it's truth. That you would put your hand on her for any reason and then lay down next to her and say you love her. That's not love. Love does not hurt. Love does not hurt. You know love what? doesn't hurt. The fact that you would say talking my crap about my daughter's life and future, that's not crap. I'm not saying anything about right now. I want you to either get help or get away from her. And I'm still not sure if you get help that I want her with you. And I'm being as honest as I know how to be. It's not up to you, it's up to her. I'll be dang. I pray to God that my decisions and my influence will work. If you can't really feel it, do you realize it, really what you've done? I mean, really, you I do, that's why I called the show. You may have really, I don't think that you, I, I really don't think you know how, 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 what you're doing to her. The things that I'm hearing, it's just, there's no more. Mom, I, I think you get it, you've been saying it. You keep your daughter away from him. This is over. <laughs> it's, you know what, you know what? She's 18 years old. It's your daughter. I'll try to help you whatever I can, but in the, in the long run, if she picks that and it continues, the only thing that you could do is you start calling the police and have that guy locked up. You still are picking him? Yeah. You're, you're still, you still want to be with him? I but, love her and I want to get help. That's you, why I'm here. You love her? I can't change what I did in the past, but I'm here to change the future. You, and, 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 and what is that, running off the stage? Running away from the, what you did? Because you're telling her to leave me? And yeah, I'm telling her to leave you. I would, tell, I would tell any young woman to leave you, or leave that. anybody like you. I understand you know, that. You, so if you understand that, if you know all the harm and torture that you gave, put this poor girl through, then you be a man and say, you know what? I've done too much damage to you. I don't deserve you. You make that decision. It shouldn't have to be me or her mother making that decision. You should be man enough and say, you know what? 
You need help because you want to be with a man like me. No, I'm beating the hell out of you and you're staying with me. You go back tonight, what's going to stop you from getting angry and beating I'm the not, crap out of her? I'm not. What stopped you before? Nobody tried to drill it into me. I've never had a father figure there to tell me to stop. You and need you need to get help. You need to get counseling so you can come to a place that you recognize your worth so you don't accept that. That way, if he doesn't get the help that he needs, then you will be strong enough to say, I'm not going to put up with this. I don't deserve this. It comes down to this. The two of you both need help. You both need help before you should be back together. If you were going to go back to this man, you're going to do it. And I've seen it a thousand times. But you know what I've also seen? I've seen eventually where it ends, bad, where the woman ends up dead. And somebody's going to be putting you in a body bag. Is that fair to your mother? And don't think for a second it's not going to happen because you know he's capable of doing it. And until he, I would say, if I were you, uh, yeah, I love you. You're saying it. You want to be with him. But can't you take a break from each other to get help so that if you do want to be together, you can be normal with each other? And healthy? Can we make that happen or no? All I'm going to say is, you, okay, you made your decision. But I'm telling you right now, what I'm going to do is, if she ever calls me, if she ever calls me, if you ever call me, and you, I ever hear of you putting your hands on her again, I will come after you with the law myself, and I will make sure you're put in handcuffs, and I'll make sure you're prosecuted, and I will make sure and do everything I can to put you in jail so you can't touch her, and then you'll get the help whether you want it or not. You're being selfish right now. You go on being selfish. That's not love. That's not being a man. You let me know if anything happens. Three days after the show, Andrea and Sean went into an artificial insemination clinic and she recently tested positive for pregnancy.